Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I see that you have your questions ready, so let's go right to work and begin with the first question. Who wants to lead off tonight? Is it meaningful to speak of a moral perspective on human behavior versus a psychological perspective? It's meaningful in that a moral perspective on human behavior is concerned with the question of is a person to be praised or blamed for a given piece of behavior? Was that piece of behavior within his volitional control? In other words, the moral perspective is primarily concerned with the question, does this behavior conform to some particular standard of good and bad or good and evil? And how do we evaluate the person morally who performed the particular piece of behavior? Do we say that he is morally praiseworthy for taking this particular action, or do we say that he is morally to be blamed for taking this particular action? That, in essence, is what is meant by the moral perspective on human behavior. And I think that can be contrasted with the psychological perspective, which is concerned with more what were the motives, why a person took a particular piece of behavior, performed a given action, what psychological factors were behind the behavior, what does it indicate about his psychological condition that he acted such as he did act. There needn't be any particular primary focus or interest on the moral meaning of the action, but rather, why did he take it? What prompted him to take it? What does it say about his state of mind that he took it? What can we learn about his personality from the fact that he did what he did or didn't do, as the case may be? So that in one case, we are judging the person from a standard of good and bad, and in the other case, we are trying to understand the person from the point of view of his psychology as it was manifest in some behavior or some action or the way he lives his life. Now, these two viewpoints are not inherently incompatible, but you'll generally find that a person who is strongly inclined to view every action first and foremost from the standpoint of its moral meaning is less inclined to be interested in or especially understanding of the psychological meaning and ramifications of behavior. Very rarely you'll find a person who is able to move back and forth rather easily between both perspectives. And since both perspectives do have relevance to human life, I think it's desirable that we be able to maintain both perspectives. Very often, people who are primarily oriented toward the psychological side of it are really quite indifferent to the moral meaning of behavior. People very often who are primarily oriented to the moral side of it are often quite oblivious to or very ignorant of the psychological aspects of behavior. Ideally, I would say, within the limits of our knowledge, we should be able to be aware of both perspectives. I think that in certain contexts, one perspective is more relevant than another. I don't think it's desirable to exclusively focus on human behavior from one of these aspects while being oblivious to the other. Now, as a matter of fact, statistically speaking, most people who tend to view behavior primarily from a moral point of view at least in my experience and observation, are really quite ignorant of human psychology, sometimes appallingly so. And that's really very dangerous because a morality that is ignorant of psychology is in a lot of trouble, meaning by that, that any judgments of people morally have to take cognizance of and be aware of human psychological factors. On the other hand, again, at least in my observation, People who specialize exclusively in the psychological perspective are often undesirably indifferent to the moral meaning of behavior. 
There are very few people who seem to know how to combine both. Yet, as I've already said, in my view, both perspectives are necessary and both have to be integrated. You have remarked that many people are afraid of happiness, even while professing to desire it. And you have said that they do many things to keep themselves unhappy. Would you comment on this? Yes, we've talked about the fact that people do do many things to keep themselves unhappy, even while saying they want to be happy. They're afraid of it. Now, why might people be afraid of being happy? Well, to begin with, if you're happy, maybe you feel nobody will feel sorry for you anymore. And for many people, that's a very important issue. Many people have suffered a great deal in their life, and nobody seemed to care, and it's hurt them a good deal. And they go on flaunting their suffering, hoping that somebody will see, somebody will feel sympathy, somebody will say, oh, how hard it's been for you. And when they imagine solving their problems on their own and making themselves happy, they flinch from this, they pull back from it, because what they are primarily oriented toward is not the happiness they're going to feel, but rather the fact that they're going to lose all chance for getting that sympathy and compassion for which they feel themselves to have been starved for so long. And in the course of therapy, we see this particular pattern all the time, this craving for others to feel sorry for one that can cause one to cling very tenaciously to one's own suffering. Then again, there are people who feel that to be happy really marks you down as superficial. That if you want to be considered deep, or heavy, as that modern word has it, you've got to suffer, because only people who suffer really have spiritual depth. And therefore, if you want to impress other people as being, you know, different, unique, special, why then you've got to suffer, and suffer plenty. So here you get a kind of clinging to whatever hurt you in life, nurturing your past pain. Nurturing it is really the right word, too. And it's really a kind of elaborate role-playing to fulfill an image of what you think makes you profound. One of the most astonishing and even incredible things I ever heard a client in therapy say once was that, well, everybody is happy, you know, if you want to be different, you should suffer. Which almost floored me because that's about the most untrue sentence I ever heard in my life. Almost everybody is unhappy as hell, and if you want to be different, be happy, if that's any incentive. Then there are still other factors I can think of that are very, very evident when one is doing therapy. They come up all the time. People feel that uh, happiness can't last. Happiness will disappear anyway. They've been unhappy all their lives. To be unhappy is part of their self-concept. If they're happy, it's unnatural. It's a freak. It's a thing of the moment. It can't possibly last. This can't possibly be happening to me, they feel. And therefore, to be happy actually provokes anxiety in them because of the feeling they're in a strange, unfamiliar situation that they cannot relate to their self-concept, can't relate to the way they experience themselves, and they feel it's weird, it's strange, it's unfamiliar, and that alone is frightening, plus the fact they feel for sure it's going to go anyway. It's so much not me, it's so much not what my life ever has been or what my life is all about that it scares them, it's going to disappear anyway. So they feel if I let it in, if I let myself feel the happiness, it's only going to be to set myself up for a new disappointment and a new hurt. Therefore, it's better not to be happy in the first place. That's another factor. Then, I feel I could go on with this for hours thinking of other motives, but one more that comes to mind is Sometimes people will deliberately make themselves unhappy, will deliberately sabotage their lives, will deliberately fail, perhaps to punish parents. Maybe the parents mistreated them when the children were young or didn't give them what the child needed. And so the child, now an adult, is deliberately failing, in effect, saying to the parents, see how unhappy I am, now will you give me what you never gave me? That motive also causes people often to sabotage their own chances for happiness or success and to keep themselves down and to keep themselves frustrated. 